Good morning, good morning, Fresh Oil family. Good to see all of you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I have my dear friend, Wally Gilmore. He's with us today. He's going to be sharing our, his heart concerning uh, the tent of David, what worship is, what God is doing today. Go ahead and say hello, Wally. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to learn a little Spanish yeah, right around on. this man. Yeah, you know, little known fact, Wally is half Puerto Rican, so... Hallelujah. Glory. Okay. So guys, we're going to spend time in the presence of God like we always do. Um, and we're just going to wait. We're going to wait before the Lord. We're going to spend time with the Lord. So mm -hmm. I encourage all of you uh, just to cast every care down, let go of every burden, every concern. We're here to minister to the presence of the Lord together. And so let's just worship his presence. And then we're going to get into what is worship and all of the wonderful things that comes with that. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just worship his presence. Spirit, we honor you. You're worthy, 
is what you are, Lord. That is who you are for us. Yeah. Wellspring of water. In you is the fountain of life, and in your light do we see light, Lord. Worship. Set in your word, Lord. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink, and out of his belly will flow rivers of living water.
us, Lord. beautiful work where he is taking his hammer and he's breaking hard parts of your heart as you're sitting here just being with the Lord with no other agenda no other purpose just to be with him to enjoy the moment with the Lord he's breaking callous hearts with his sweetness you don't have to do anything you don't have to make anything happen. You can just sit in his presence just like this. He does the work. He does the work. And that's the beauty of worshiping him in the spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power, it's not by effort, it's by His Spirit, it's by His grace. Oh, hallelujah. too hard you're doing it wrong <laughs> his presence is to be enjoyed
every time you praise, you're empowered by His Spirit. Praise empowers you, strengthens you. His presence brings enrichment in every area of our lives. So many times we try to get things or try to make things happen or what do I need to do in my next steps? What do I need to do to, to be better, to do more, to get closer? And I feel like the Lord is saying to some of you, it's everything is in my presence. Everything that you would ever need is in my presence. And I want you to move and be strengthened and nourished by my presence.
Isn't it amazing, Wally, <laughs> how like there's like 1,200 people on and we're not doing anything. <laughs> it's yeah. just the Lord. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's pretty crazy. Isn't that amazing? I don't know about you, Wally, but I'll just share some of the things that I felt in my spirit. I just feel the presence of the Lord so strong. Um, I just feel like as we were just waiting before the Lord like that, it was like waves upon waves of renewal and refreshing. Mm -hmm. And I also felt like as we were waiting, this is something that's been like, it's been a repeated thing, something the Holy Spirit has been showing me personally. But I also think that it's something also related to the, the fresh oil family as well, that every time when we wait before the Lord and we spend, it, we, we spend extended time with Him, extended time is never wasted time. And there is something that bypasses the intellect, that bypasses the the striving, that bypasses the flesh, that if we just kind of just sit there and present ourselves as a living sacrifice, all we have to do is present ourselves. We present ourselves before his presence. And in that place, there is rest, there is renewal, there's refreshing, there's healing, there's joy all these wonderful things and it's just like i just keep getting reminded over and over again that extended time with the lord is never wasted time even if you don't sense anything or feel anything mm -hmm. extended time with god is never a waste you know so i was i was just sensing that so strongly and my brother jonathan was out there and he said he said um he was like breakthrough yeah i felt that too i felt like the holy spirit was releasing breakthrough as we were just waiting and i feel like <clears throat> also like a, a little bit of a play on words <clears throat> excuse me it was like he's breaking us in you know that's that's what i felt like as we were just waiting worshiping him for with no other agenda just to be with him it was breaking us in yeah. so I, don't, I just wanted to share that. What about you, Wally? Like, what were you sensing? What well, were you getting? I, I was, I was um, just listening to the track. It's just because there's some the chords. I'm, I get lost in the chords. By the way, uh, this track that we're listening is produced by Wally. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's it's sometimes it's a little hard to listen to because you're like, oh man, that was I hear <laughs> I hear little things. But uh, yeah. as I was listening to it, you can hear just the 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 pad just kind of going back and forth and what i felt like the lord was saying to me in that time was just breathe in yeah breathe me out mm -hmm. breathe me in mm -hmm. breathe me out and you find rest in that spot and when you find and when you finally get to that rest spot then you start to see like a steady stream of flowing water and if you see and historically if you see a uh, flowing water running over a rock it will wear that rock down. Oh man, that's good. So if you just sit and you allow that water to wash over you, it will yeah. break down all that hard stuff. And that's when you said the breakthrough. I was like, yeah, yeah. Wow. Sometimes it's instantaneous. Other times it's a flowing water just over years. He's just breaking things down. He's smoothing that rock mm. out. That's really, uh, you know, rough on the outside. Man, that's powerful. You know, as you were saying that, I, I don't know if you know what a stereogram is. Mm -mm. It's like this. It's this. Uh, it's like this picture that's like blurry and weird and fuzzy. It's like an optical illusion. Okay. And when you rest your eyes, oh, yes, you start yes, to see the image pop yeah. up. Clearly. I never can see those though. <laughs> oh, I always see them all the time. I, I love watching them. Uh, I never can see them. But um, but that's kind of like what it reminded me of. Is like when you learn to rest. Mm -hmm. Not only is god wearing and smoothing you out but also i think there's sight in that too mm, i think there, there's that clarity when you learn to rest in his presence you know so man i feel the anointing like literally just i just sense the anointing of the holy ghost mm -hmm. so i'm gonna let you 
flow with it. No. Um, <laughs> hey, if you guys can do me a favor, like this stream. There's about almost uh, uh, there's about almost twelve fifty watching. So, if you guys can like the stream and share it, that would be great. Subscribe. Also, I went ahead and pinned Wally Gilmore's uh, information. So, like his YouTube channel and his link tree is pinned. So, if you want to be a blessing to him, uh, I encourage you to be a blessing. Subscribe to his channel. Also, just donate give as the lord leads you to do but let let's talk about something uh uh wally i was gonna call you david because i'm looking at the yeah. david, david there <laughs> yeah but um some of the things that we have in common is so funny because you had a ministry called the tent of david right the call of david the call of david yeah. yeah and like for me what i've been feeling in my heart is that god is wanting to raise up a davidic type of worship mm -hmm. movement and intercession and god wants to restore that ministry of david that that tent of david back to the church mm -hmm. so let's um let's let's talk about that so what's on your heart about it well one thing that when when you said hey let's let's talk about the tent of david i started looking into it a little bit deeper and yeah. one thing that really stood out to me and just where my how my mind works is looking at you know the the solomon's temple yeah and the difference between the tent of David and Solomon's temple, everybody's like, oh man, this Solomon's temple was where it was at because that thing was Massive, monumentous. Yeah. It was awesome. It was gorgeous. Um, but it's funny how everybody's talking about we need to get back to the tent of David. And, and Amos, it's, it's, it's talking about the tent of David, not, not Solomon's right. temple. So uh, there's a lot of significance to it being a tent and being mobile. And, and I love how, if you look into it a little bit, you can see a type of Christ. In oh, it. yeah. And, um, and when you're looking at that, uh, when you're comparing the two, you you're look at the humility versus the grandeur. Mm. You're looking at the flexibility and, and, the, and the mobility. Um, in ministry, if you've ever been on a missions trip, you can see that you need to be flexible. Yeah. Uh, God is an, a God of order, but you need to be flexible. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can make your plans and say, this is what the Lord's told me to do and I'm going to do it. But um, you need to be flexible. And that, and we need to live a lifestyle of worship. When you're living a lifestyle of surrender, and that's what living a lifestyle of worship is. And I believe that that's what uh, the Ten of David's all about is living a lifestyle of just pure and utter surrender mm. to Him. Uh, that's that's a that's a very flexible place yeah. to be in. Yeah, that reminds me. Like, um, I believe it's an Amos, if I'm not mistaken, that says that God will restore the fallen tent of David. Mm -hmm. So, um, for those that don't know what you're talking about, uh, let's say uh, there, I, I'm pretty sure people are asking, like, what is the tent of David? Uh, if uh, if you can explain to to us, like, what what is that about, like? What is that? So you got to go back into Second uh, Samuel, um, where David got the ark back, and he pitched a tent so that people could come and worship. Mm. And uh, it, it, the access to it was very um, intimate. Yeah, uh, because it was it was it wasn't as formal as Solomon's temple number one, uh, but or even Moses's tabernacle, ab right? Absolutely. Yeah. So people could come in and 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 they could worship, but um, the tent was the house of the Lord, and it's a uh, it's a it's a view of us as the church and as a believer of we we are the tent of David, we are right. we we are the host of right. the Holy Spirit, and that's that's the dwelling place. Mm. So to to restore back what once was and not get hung up in the formalities. Of uh, going to looking at a church building and, and looking at different uh, structures, but realizing that we are a flexible being, that realizing that we are an intimate being, realizing that we're coming to Him in humility, and we're living this life of just uh, being this tent that can be picked up and moved and have this intimate relationship mm. where the Lord can abide in us. That is to me what the restoration of the tent of David is. Yeah. Man, that's so powerful because like, as you're talking, like all these scriptures are just kind of jumping up in my spirit. Uh, they, uh, Peter, 
actually says before he dies. <laughs> he's 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 prophesying the time of his departure. And he says, I have to put up my tent. This tent will be dissolved. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's uh, in one of Paul's letters as well, talking about the resurrection, that the body is like a tent. It's a tabernacle. Mm -hmm. It's a dwelling place. And I think that's all these rich type and shadow. So, so like we see the first tent, uh, we see the tent of meeting, right, with Moses. Mm -hmm. And I love that because... I think it's in Exodus 33, 34, around those passages, the Bible says that the Lord would descend in the place called the tent of meeting, and he would speak to Moses face to face as mm -hmm. with a friend. Yeah. And man, that's like one of, that is so powerful because it's like, man, I want to be a friend of God. Yeah. And like, like there's so many patterns about that because like when I read that passage, the scripture says that they called that place the tent of meeting. Moses called it that. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't any formality there. It wasn't yet the tabernacle. Right. It was just the tent of meeting and face-to-face -face contact and relationship and fellowship with God. And the people would watch him from afar. And that's that's to me that to me, that's what true ministry should look like. Mm -hmm. It's like face-to-face -face ministry with the presence of the Lord. And then people being invited to that fellowship that you yourself are engaging in. Mm -hmm. And and then God tells him, you know, construct the tabernacle and there's all these furnishings and everything has a significance and it's very formal and 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 very structured, but the glory of God is on it. Yeah. And then then we have uh the Ark of the Covenant, and then 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 all this all, all of the all these things begin to shift and and then you have Mo, uh, David, what, uh, several hundreds of hundreds of years later. And uh, what is it that, that the ark was taken into the tent of Obed-Edom? And it's crazy because the ark is symbolic of the presence of God. Uh, some translations call the ark uh, of the covenant the ark of his presence. Mm -hmm. And when Obed-Edom hosted the presence, everything flourished. Yeah. He didn't even do anything. He right. just kind of hosted the presence of God there. Everything flourished. And then in 2 Samuel 6, he takes, uh, uh, King David takes the ark of his presence back into Jerusalem, uh, being crowned as king. Mm -hmm. he, he gives us Psalm 24, let the king of glory come in. Mm -hmm. He starts dancing like a fool, you know, wearing a linen ephod, you know, just being totally undignified. And what's crazy is in that story, Milka, his, his wife, spurns him. And the Bible says from that point on, she couldn't bear any more children. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's this type and shadow of fruitfulness right. when you celebrate the presence of God, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And then and then the thing is, is like the thing about the tent of David is what you just said, it's very informal. And and David basically pitches this tent to be like this 24 hour access to the people of God mm -hmm. and and God. And and it doesn't look like the tabernacle of Moses at right. all. It's just like this open access. Well, David was living in a in a different realm than a lot of people. I mean, he yeah. was I mean, he he was a man after God's own heart. So he 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 had direct access. He wasn't going through anybody. He wasn't going through the priest. He right. was going directly to him. Yeah. And that was not normal. Right. So. And it's it's crazy because David is like a type and shadow of Jesus mm -hmm. because you see he was he was uh he there there was some priestly elements to him. Yep. You know, even though he wasn't a priest, he was from the tribe of Judah, but he's he there was still certain things like he wore a linen ephod, you know, he he ate consecrated bread that he wasn't supposed to eat, you know, <laughs> like there's just so many things that he kind of bypasses, but he's like this priest, king, prophet kind of a deal. Yeah. And you see that anoint that that anointing that's that rested on David. This is why Jesus is called the son of David, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because there is that uh prophet, priest, and king's anointing. But yeah, uh I see all your notes there, so go ahead and just... Well, just um, one thing that the Lord's really been dealing with me on for the last few years mm. is that, um, you know, just being undignified and, right. and the flexible and the intimacy and the, the humility. And when you're, when you're dealing with that, uh, growing up in church like I did and have, um, you, you, you get this formality about you. And right. what, what... Polished. The, you get polished. Right. And there's this book by Edwin McMahon... Uh, called the Barbarian Way Out of Society, 
And it talks about how when we first get saved, we have these clubs and we beat everybody over the head. You know, we're prophesying over people. We're, <laughs> we're saving people. You know, we're, we're just all on fire for the right. Lord. But the, we get more dignified. Uh, we get these swords. Uh-huh. And those, those clubs become swords. And we land up just polishing the swords so they look great. And we don't use them. Right. Like we used to use the club. And so you become this thing. You become domesticated. Exactly. <laughs> and that's 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 what I believe uh, Amos is talking about with the Ten of David right. coming back to this this place of just, hey, you know what? Just go after it. You know, forget the rules, forget what you think you know, and just go back and become part of the basics of life and the basics of what God has called us to be. Hmm. Yeah. There was a book that I was reading not too long ago on on prayer. And one of the quotes really rocked me. He was talking about the church returning back to that Davidic type of worship. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that when David became king, his political strategy was the presence of God. (laughs) Yeah, that was it. I mean, what else do you need? (laughs) Yeah, He's like Psalm 27, you know, like I think it's Psalm 27 or Psalm 20. Yeah, I think it's Psalm 27 where it talks about, you know, uh, this one thing that I desire, that this this one thing that I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And if you read that contextually within the background, he's like literally about to get into a battle. And it doesn't make any sense because he's like, you know, like I just picture it's like, okay, well, you're about to get into battle. There's people that want to kill you. There's people that want to destroy the nation of Israel. And the only thing you're caring about is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's the way to victory. Like all throughout the Old Testament and, and even into the New Testament, you see these types and shadows of freedom, victory, breakthrough, conquest through worship. Yeah. Everything's through worship. And worship is not just as as I know you're gonna say this, it's it's not just singing or songs. It's it truly is the highest form of prayer. Mm-hmm. It's praise. Well, I was talking to somebody, I can't remember who it was, but I was talking with him and we were talking about worship. And he said to me, you think that we're going to sit around like cherubim, just on harps singing and for eternity? That's not heaven. Everybody thinks, and that's what right. they paint this picture to right. be is everybody's awe. Oh, well, because everybody, some people get discouraged. I don't, I can't sing. I can't sing. I can't play an instrument. Right. So, you know, when you're, um, when you, when you call it, a uh, worship, worship is nothing more than surrender. Mm-hmm. That that word means surrender. And living a lifestyle of worship, of surrender, that means that you can be, uh, that's the greatest thing about it, is that you could be doing laundry, mm-hmm. you can be changing diapers, you could be working, you could be reading, you could be doing whatever you're doing and worshiping. Mm-hmm. That's living a life of, of complete surrender to the Lord, right? And of worship. Um, I like old English words and like, well, words in general, like the breakdown of words. And I looked up the entomology of the word worship mm. and it's an old English, I think it's a Welsh word or something. And it's, it comes from the word worthy ship, mm. the worthy ship. Nice. And that's what worship is. It's like, okay, it's a state of surrender and, 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 and yielding to him because he is worthy. Yeah. And that's what worship is. Worthy ship. So powerful, man. This is awesome. Yeah. And the thing is, is like people, they, they just going back to like what you were saying about like being polished and I, I call it being institutionalized yeah. or being domesticated where it's like, you're wild. You have the fire of God on you. You're just zealous. And yep. then, and then the next thing, you know, you spend time in the church and people start going there, there you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll eventually tone down. And, Unfortunately, that's true. And what ends up happening is that we create lukewarm believers mm-hmm. instead of stoking the flames and helping them, guiding them. Mm-hmm. Instead of guiding them, we kind of just, they're there, you know. Yeah. And and we take the wildness out of it. We take the extravagance, the 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 the, 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 the zeal out of out of worship. And what ends up happening is you become institutionalized, you become polished, you look good, but you're dead on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you ever notice how they yeah. even say God different after a while? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's weird. It's I like it's like something that you're... Yeah, so I, 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 I totally resonate with you, man, because like even in the book of Acts, like P- 
Peter actually quotes that prophecy from Amos mm -hmm. that 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 fallen tent of David will be established. And what were they doing in the upper room? They were praising, mm -hmm. they were worshiping, yep. they were praying. And even when they were speaking in tongues and prophesying, what were they saying? They were praising the Lord. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, man. And like I know there are many of you watching right now that you know you you feel this call to worship. Uh, and I just want to encourage you, worship is just surrendering and just giving everything over to the Lord. And whether you're wiping diapers or washing dishes or you know, uh, going for a walk with your spouse, it's all worship unto the Lord. It reminds me of what Paul said. He says, whether we eat or we drink, we do so unto the Lord. Yeah. Just the fact that you exist mm -hmm. brings glory to God. Your Every breath you breathe is worship. That's right. Because every breath you receive is from him. Come on, man. So if you're, if you take in, you're breathing out. It, you're, that's what you're supposed to do. You take in what he gives you and you breathe it out. It, it, it's such a um, reciprocal thing. It's, it's amazing. Mm. I mean, you just think about how precipitation works, how the sun draws the water up into the clouds and then the clouds bring it back down and, and feed the land so that it can flourish. That's exactly how our lives are. Whether we want to recognize that or not is a different story, but that is, that is the perfect picture of worship. Yeah. Of him pouring down into us and us receiving and then giving right back to him mm -hmm. what is all he is. Even the word, even the Lord, the 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 uh, the sacred name of the Lord, it it's like a breath sound. Mm -hmm. Yahweh. Yeah, Yahweh. It's like let everything that br that has breath praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's like what is it? It's the last Psalm of uh, Psalm 150, mm -hmm. I think. And it's like yes, like you can tap into the presence of God at all times mm -hmm. by the sheer fact that you're alive. <laughs> yes, yes, that's amazing. You know, so tell us a little bit, Wally, about your journey. Like you, you, you grew up in the church, and then I, I know that you've probably went through some shifts and breakthroughs. Tell us where you came from and some of the things that God has brought you through and from in this avenue of worship. Uh, well, um, you know, I grew up in church. My my dad was a music pastor at a large church in Orlando, and so I kind of grew up. I was practically born in the pew because mm -hmm. um, we were there all the time. So um, I had my run of the place, you know. So it was it was a um, it, I I didn't follow the rules very good, you know. So but you know I I sang in the choir, I played in the orchestra. I really love doing that stuff, but man, I, I knew back then that I was living a double life. Mm. I knew that when I mm -hmm. went to school, I was I was somebody completely different than I was at church. I knew, because uh, we, we lived about 45 minutes to an hour away from the church, so it made it very easy to be able to become somebody different when mm -hmm. you're at school, because mm -hmm. when you're in the Orlando area where the church was, um, it was like living in a fishbowl. You walk into a restaurant, everybody knew who you were. Um, and then you go out to where we lived in DeBerry up and 45 minutes north. Uh, it, you know, you could do what you want because people didn't really know you. Um, so it, it, it festered that thing of living that double life and that double standard that you, that you have, um, that, that creeps in. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, going to a bunch of different youth things and you'd get saved again. And, you know, I was a big star Wars fan. I don't know how many times I threw out my star Wars movies <laughs> thinking that they were bad, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, I, I met my wife. We went, met at a very young age. Um, I think I was like 15. Wow. Um, and, um, you know, we, we wanted to be together from day one, you know, in fact, and it's the, the story is, is that, uh, my, my buddy dared me to get a, a certain number of girls to go out with me at the same time. You know, when you're dating, you're not really dating. <laughs> you just say that you're their girlfriend, whatever boyfriend. And, um, he's dared me to do 10 at the same time. And Amber was the 10th one so that I could win the 50 bucks. <laughs> Um, but she was the one that, yeah. you know, I, the Lord said, that's her. Wow. So, um, we, we, uh, funny story is we went, uh, junior year of high school and we actually went to my parents and said, we wanted to get married. 
Wow. <laughs> Juniors in high Juniors school. Juniors in high school. How did they react? Oh, dad's like, just wait right there. Let me get the camera. <laughs> so he went and got the camera and me being the idiot and haughty little kid I was, I was like, fine, get the camera. You know, I'll yeah. tell you again, you know, I want to get married. And so, uh, you know, we, they're like, just graduate. So I graduated high school um, and I proposed to her that, um, that December. Wow. And then we got married the following November. Wow. So how long have you been married exactly? 25 years. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's been a, it's been a, been a journey. We got two, two little girls, not little anymore. Yeah. Um, Hannah's 21 now and uh, Ava's 16. So it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. But um, through that life's journey, you know, being on, I got to be on staff at one of the largest churches in the East Coast um, as a, as a, uh, as an apprentice, and then I worked my way up to being an associate pastor. Um, seeing some of the in, inner workings of the church that will mess with you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you just as long as the Lord stays in the forefront, and you just keep getting reminded. Uh, to get back to the basics, you know, you'll, you'll survive and you'll, you'll do fine. Um, but, um, there was, um, there was something that happened in our life where we, we got out of ministry completely Mm -hmm. and it it devastated our, our family. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sent us back. You want to talk about getting back to the basics? Uh, cause, um, back when I was, you know, cause as a 20 year old kid, you're the youngest, uh, associate pastor in one of the largest churches, Mm -hmm. man, you get, and it was handed to me on a silver platter too. Wow! They changed the bylaws of the church so I could work under my dad because he was the music pastor and I was the I was came on as the associate. So you get this thing of like I've arrived, right? Type of thing. I'm the head honcho. Yeah, yeah. And um, and man, that that's something that Satan just loves to oh, play yeah. with you with pride. Yeah. He, and that thing, it, it's it's a it's a weed that grows into this full blown tree, and it starts to uh, have this fruit that is just toxic in mm-hmm. your life. Mm-hmm. And growing up in church, you learn the language, you learn how to talk, you learn how to act, and it's all a lie. And uh, I got really really good at it. Yeah, I was a I was a really good um, deceiver, uh, manipulator. Um, and people had no idea what was going on in real life. Wow! In, in my in my life, and isn't that crazy? It, it yeah. And and people don't they don't they can't see it. Yeah, that's wild, man. So the Lord allowed us to be taken out of ministry, and it was a very painful thing. And um, it it I mean it reset us. I mean we lost our house, we lost wow. everything. I had no job. I remember um, sitting on the couch at my parents' house because we had to move in with my parents, and um, I remember just sitting there, yeah, um, just like a zombie. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know what to say. My dad would say, "Hey, are you going to look? At, are you thinking about getting a job?" And I'm just like, "I don't know. I don't know." Yeah, you feel like you lost everything. Yeah, you just lose everything. Your girls are sleeping on the floor in the in the oh, back man. room, and you just like you're just devastated because everything that you worked hard for or was handed to you rather, you know, just left. Wow. Your whole identity was just stripped away. And and isn't that crazy? Because like with ministry, if you're not careful, you that is your identity. Yes. And this is why, like for me, like it's something that I always harp on all the time on the stream. Because um, for me, I went through something similar where it was like, that was my identity. Mm -hmm. No, I'm the, you know, I'm the one with, with the word of God and I'm the preacher. And it's like, no, our identity is to minister to him. Mm -hmm. Our identity is son. So, yeah. Yeah. Because if you let your identity be wrapped up in your ministry, your ministry will fail. Oh yeah. You, you have to, you have to make sure your identity is in him. If it, if it is not, you will. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an open door for Satan just to come and have his way. Mm-hmm. So um, after I learned that hard lesson, you know, we we slowly got back into ministry, slowly got our family back together, slowly, you know, uh, was restored, and um, and here we are today with ev- with our priorities intact, with our priorities in order, and the Lord had ordered every single step. Looking back. Um, you know, you see it, but in the time you're like, man, Lord, what are you doing? What's going right. on here? And now you say, man, I can see now the preparation. I can see now why he made me walk through it, the mm. way that it happened, mm-hmm. the things you learn, 
uh, of who he is. You know, when you start to talk about um, certain um, problems with with men in particular, um, you can you can really minister in a in a different way, right? And that nobody else can minister to yeah. like that. It's it's funny because you're talking about we we opened up with the restoration of the fall the of the tent of David, mm-hmm. and it's almost prophetically like. That's your story too. Well, I believe it's all, all of our stories. Yeah, you know, it's I, a I, restoration work. I, it is. I mean, because we're all fallen. That's we're, right. We're, we've all messed up. We've all we're all sin. We've all fallen mm-hmm. short of the glory. And allowing the Lord to come rebuild your tent, and allowing your the Lord to come have His way, so that He can set you rightly in His sight, and that you can identify as who you are in Christ, as a son and a daughter yeah. of the living King. I mean, when you mess up really bad, it's hard to see yourself in good light. Right. It's hard to see yourself as a son and daughter of the Most High King. The mm-hmm. creator of the universe still sees me and loves me. That's hard to, to imagine sometimes right. and to see. Um, but, you know, if you, if you humble yourself mm-hmm. and you allow him to do his work and rebuild that tent, Man, that's so good. That's such a powerful, potent message. Because mm-hmm. I know there's plenty of people that resonate with that even on the stream. Where And one of the things that I get often, all the time, is like, I, I was like this with God. And I was close with the Lord. And then all of a sudden, this happened. And now I don't hear him. Mm-hmm. And blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you went through that. Oh yeah. How did you explain that? And then how did you come out of that? Well, we went through a lot of counseling. So mm-hmm. there was a pastor that came to the rescue for me. Um, his, his ministry is Acts 2 Church. Yeah. And, and, and man, yeah. Uh, Andrew Lamb. Andrew Lamb. Man, I remember being in his living room. It was just a living room church. Mm. We sat in his living room. And I remember one time we were there with him and Jocelyn, his wife, and um, we were talking. And he, he just looked at me and he says, stay right there for a second. He went in the other room, got a pitcher of water. And I stood there in the middle of the room I, on his rug in, the, in his living room. And he just poured this water over me. Wow. And I, and I was, you know, fully clothed and, you know, it wasn't expected. It wasn't planned or anything. He just felt like the Lord told him to do that. But I, it was a life changing thing for me mm. because what he said to me was, is allow him to wash over you. Come on. And I was so dead inside and so frustrated and couldn't hear the Lord that when he said those words, I heard the words, but I didn't, I could not do it. So the physical feeling of the water washing over me, it, it, it did something. It right. opened up those senses um, to open my spirit back up, uh, if you will. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it, it changed my life is when that water hit me and it started to pour and I could feel it just dripping down my face and all over my body. And just the Lord, he loves, he loves me. And this is his blood washing over me. And what was in the past is in the past and it's done. That's right. hundred percent. Because if you stay stuck in the past, you'll never enjoy the present. Absolutely. And you can't see the future. Either. No, it robs you completely, you know? So yeah, that's a that's a powerful thing. So uh, talk to us about worship back then as it is now. I'm sure you're, you've gone through some major shifts in your heart and your thought life oh, yeah. concerning that. Talk to us about that. Well, as a worship leader, uh, we used to, I, I'd have a set. So you'd have the songs planned out, mm-hmm. and you'd you some of them you know get click and you stuck, and you're done and in in and out. Now it's I can't lead worship like that anymore. Right. Um. It, it just it doesn't compute. It just it doesn't feel real anymore. And it did before. Um. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now that free flowingness of just seeing what the Lord's going to do in that moment. Because uh, he speaks, he's a living, breathing being. Right. So he's not mechanical. Exactly. So if you're if if you don't allow it the flow, you're gonna miss him. Right. And so if and that's goes along with the plans in our life too. You know. So if we're 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 dead set on oh well, even if it's something that the Lord told us, because I believe that the Lord planned out our worship packages. You know, He gave us the songs. You know. Mm But, you know, he still wants you to be like, hey, be flexible. And Dr. Rutland used to say, um, don't pound the stakes in too deep. We're leaving in the morning. Right. So That's good. So um, that, that, that's in worship, 
it, it, I've learned to, to be that way. I've learned to just be flexible, be willing to, um, you know, follow those rabbit trails that the Lord gives you. Yeah. Uh, because it's going to minister to somebody, if not just you. Right. Because you're, when you're worshiping, you're, you're needing to just hear the Lord to do what he wants you to do and to be who he wants you to be because it, it you don't understand it at the time. And I know that that's probably sometimes where you, you'll oh, say yeah. something and you're like, I don't know why the heck I just said that, but it makes no sense. And then somebody walks up to you after and says, dude, that thing. Oh, oh. man, I'm so glad you said that. And you're like, wow, <laughs> I had no idea. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Like you find the moments of spontaneity, uh, like for me, I'm going. I'm literally going through the same thing, but in the preaching mm. aspect of it. Because before, like, like you, like I was very set. This is what I'm going to talk about. This mm. is where we're going. This mm-hmm. is what we're going to do. And lately, it's more like just open up your Bible and depend on me in that moment. Yeah. And it ends up being way better, better. than what I ever thought. You yeah. know. And we miss it because we're so polished. Yeah you know, stuck in the structure, being domesticated. And there's nothing wrong with having order or stru- I love, we, uh, uh, for those that don't know, uh, at House of Glory, uh, uh, Wally and his wife, Amber, was leading worship uh, with us and for us yesterday. And they're moving, right? Woohoo. Woohoo. In June, we're going to, he's going to be our worship pastor. It's going to be awesome. Um, so we're so excited about that. But one of the things that I loved yesterday it was uh, it was just before uh, we started intercession at a house of glory, and it was so funny because I was like, "Hey, so what's the set? What are we doing?" And he's like, "I have no idea." <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, "That's great because I have no idea what I'm doing either." <laughs> yeah, that was you know. But but what happens is like I rather have I rather live like that. Well, there's a there's a there's a form of, of dependency. Yeah, that's how, exactly what I was just gonna say. It's Talk just, on that. It's just you know, if if you if you plan it out, you're you're not dependent on the Lord. You and you almost turn your ears off to hear what he the direction he wants you to go. Right. Because up, oh, you know, I I heard it already, so right. I'm gonna follow that. Um. And what if you missed it? Right. Exactly. You know, what if you're allowing your life situation to uh, reflect what you're doing in that moment instead of what the Lord's actually saying? Because, you know, we're, we are powerful. You know, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. So that means there, there's power in us. He's given mm-hmm. us this power. We have these emotions that will overtake us. And that's why we need his help to, to subdue us at, at times. So if we allow our emotions to dictate situations in our life and close off our ears um we'll we'll miss we'll miss oh, the yeah. lord as a worship leader as a, as a pastor i mean there there's a lot of stuff that's going on in life you know right. as a mom as a dad uh you let your emotions when when your kids do something bad or or something that you're disappointed with you know you let your emotions overtake you uh, you can't properly you know instruct the the child in the way they should go because you're you're so emotionally mm. you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. caught up in the moment instead of sitting there going lord what what how can i best right teach right. how can i best learn for myself how can mm-hmm. yeah um about that is like for me and i'm pretty sure you can relate with this as well like one of the things that totally destroys the flow of the spirit is confidence in yourself Mm -hmm. like the like the bible says we don't place confidence in the flesh now there's a difference between respecting the anointing and the office that's on your life and honoring the gift that you already have because we all do have them but when it's like it's very easy if you're not careful Mm -hmm. to just function from purely just the gift without depending on the presence of the lord yeah or relying on the talent yes Absolutely. You know, if you're a gifted speaker mm-hmm. and you're eloquent in speech, which I am totally not, you have to rely on, you you have to rely on the Lord if you don't have that gifting. Yeah. But if you do have that gifting, you have to be careful. What is it? Is it you or is it him? Right. You have to be very careful. If you're a great singer and and uh, uh you know play play the piano or whatever, is it you or is it him? Right. You have to choose that constantly. I I went through something like that recently where it was like I had this um 
this function to teach. And then all of a sudden God was like, (laughs) (laughs) I had to stop talking. (laughs) Yeah. But sometimes God will do that to gently remind you, Hey buddy, I'm in charge. Good job. Good job. (laughs) I'll take it from here. I'll take it from here, son. Thank you. You you did good. Just move out the way. Just move out of the way. (laughs) But yeah, those are all teaching moments and those are all powerful things. And yeah, it's just so true. So, um, so yeah, uh, Wally, like, uh, what else is on your heart? Like as it relates to worship, what is it that you really feel just, uh, as people are, are tuning in and watching, like, what would you say as something that's burning on your heart, uh, as it relates to worship, anything, any other thoughts that you want to talk on regarding that? Well, um, I just, I, I, I'm just really excited to, for what the Lord's doing. Oh yeah. You know, I, I think that what he's, uh, establishing here yeah. um, at House of Glory is is gonna be something really special. Oh, yeah. I, I I'm excited for what he's he the team that he's gonna build. Um, I'm excited uh, the leadership that I've met here is you know, phenomenal. Yeah. Just beautiful people, um, just servant hearts, and you don't see that everywhere. I know. And because of that, you know, because they're living this lifestyle of worship, you know that worship's important to them. Yeah. As it's singing songs and the music side of things as well. So the fact that, you know, we're we're coming here, we're gonna be here on the ground floor and we're gonna and the Lord's gonna allow us to build something for yeah. his kingdom yeah. is is pretty gonna be pretty awesome. I can't wait to, you know, release albums of, oh, of yeah. just secret Moments. Time, secret moment, time oh. of just being in His presence, uh, like Saturday night. Oh man, there's some prophetic stuff that came out there that, yeah. you know, listening back to it, you're just like, wow. wow. Yep. Yeah, like we were like for the yeah, because you don't know, so I'll just tell you. So like, Wally's been here since Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. And so like, just I just told him, I said, hey, every other Friday we have leadership meetings just for we're just with our leaders. And all we really do is we pray, we worship, and we eat, and we just fellowship. Very simple. And so while he came to that, he he led, man, he was a G because he, as soon as he landed, uh, he went from Tulsa, then we drove two hours, and we went right into worship. And we were all tired. We were just like done. But God was glorified. But Friday. And battling kidney stones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. With a kidney stone. <laughs> <laughs> so. Friday comes and we're just hanging out, you know, nothing spiritual. And I just said, all right, let's all worship. So at first it was a little awkward because it was like, how do you break this? You know, you just kind of, okay, turn it off. Let's go. Everybody stop eating. We'll go worship. And man, let me tell you, the glory of Christ just fell in that place. Yeah, it was special. Dude, we were worshiping for like an hour and it was nothing but spontaneous songs. Was it that long? Yeah. Yeah. I felt like 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. No, no, man. It was definitely not 20 minutes. We were singing about the fear of the Lord and the righteousness of God. It was just all coming out of our spirits. And like one leader had a song, mm-hmm. then another leader had a song, then I had a song, and then everybody was singing in a quartet. And it was just like all these it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And the spontaneous, a spontaneous. Tenetia, yeah. Thank you. It was, yeah. it was great. I mean, because I didn't feel, uh, empowered to sing anything i was just playing and uh i was like this is going to be awkward but the lord's like no i got i got I you i got it when you gave it somebody over here gave it somebody behind me gave it somebody back there gave it to you yeah and it was like this is this is what it's all about yeah this is the body of christ that's right experiencing christ together you know it's not just about one it's about all yeah and it's so powerful and so that makes me more excited about coming up here yeah. and being a part of this because i know that i'm not gonna have to carry the whole thing by right. myself right you got people here. You got you got the Lord sitting here going, "I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna bless this." Yeah, totally. It's gonna be ease. Yes, it's gonna walk in ease. Yeah, it reminds me like like my 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 style of ministry, um, like you know when we do Father's Glory events and stuff. Like obviously it's a little different because we're traveling and we're preaching and that's a little different. But you know having a a, a church and pioneering that work and building that work, it's so important that it never falls on one person. Mm-hmm. And like I, I liken the the style of ministry to the priests of the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. The, the the Ark never fell on one person. It was on the shoulders of of all the priests. You know, it was four priests holding 
the the, the presence that and that a, the glory can never be on one person. Yeah. It's got to be shared. It's got to be uh, uh, carried for the for the sake of what God's doing. So yep. yeah, powerful stuff, man. So excited for uh, you to actually finally come down here. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Up, yeah, up. I keep saying down because you. Yeah, but Florida, Arkansas, Florida, Arkansas. We're kind of we're up, kind of yeah, but yeah, man, what an awesome time uh, in the presence of God, man. Uh, so yeah, Wally Gilmore, this is him. Okay, so check out his YouTube channel. I pinned it in the in the in the uh, in the chat. I'll also put it on the description and uh, like the stream, share it, subscribe if you haven't had a chance. Let me let you know. Talk to us about Houston. You excited about coming to Houston? Oh man, I'm so excited about <coughs> Houston. I, I just um, you get to be with Jackie. I mean, yeah, that's that's we awesome. get to be with everybody. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. But you know, I I just I love worshiping with Jackie, yeah. man. He's just got that special thing on oh, him. Yeah. I remember when we were in uh, Fort Smith for the yeah. Fresh Oil Conference there. I remember being in the front row and I danced like a little fool. Yeah, I saw you. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> you don't get to do that all the time, so. right? Um, just, it, it's amazing. I'm just so looking forward to it. Just to come together with a bunch of hungry people hungry. just want the Lord. I don't want anything else, but the Lord. And That's it. when you come in one accord like that, it's easy. The presence of God is there because he's welcomed there. Yeah. Yeah. So as a worship leader, when you go into and you start to lead a worship in that place like that, you just start to say in the, and everybody <laughs> takes over. And my job, and you done, just kind of walk away. <laughs> that's 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 leading worship. That's right how there. to do that's it. That's awesome. I heard a, a an old revivalist tell me one day. He said, "My job is to get God with the people and the people with God, and just step, step away. away." Yeah, and that's how to do it. Hey guys, I'm going to show you uh, a quick clip from uh, from our previous Fresh Oil event. But check out this promo for Houston. Register. Go to fathersglory.org forward slash events. Um, and you'll find it there. Register. We need you to register. It's a hundred percent free, freely we received, freely we give, but we need an accurate uh, amount of registrations to come in. So, uh, check out this promo. It'll bless you. Praise God. So don't miss the event, guys. It's 100% free. Uh, Wally's going to be there. Jackie's going to be there. Myself is going to be there. Also, go to the events tab, fathersglory.org forward slash events. All of our events are there. I'll be in Louisiana. We'll be in Dallas. 
Uh, but Houston is going to be the event that we are we are we're so excited about. We're excited about all the events, but every year we we host a special meeting once a year. Last year we did it in Fort Smith, Arkansas. This year we're doing it in Houston, and I'm already feeling in my spirit where we're going next. I, I'll tell you after the stream, oh. but I can't I can't give it away here. But we're <laughs> There's a there's a place that the spirit just showed me, uh, and it, it is hear. it's gonna be a fun place. Let me oh, tell you, come on, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. But yeah, um, fathersglory.org forward slash events, guys. Don't forget to uh, click on the pinned chat. Wally's information is there. Be a blessing to him. I encourage you to donate, uh, subscribe to his channel, give. I want to help him. I want to. I want to. I want him to increase in his in his YouTube. So. Check it out. Be a part of the community, and also uh, check out a Father uh, House of Glory, uh, the church House of Glory. Uh, you can look for it at the House of Glory, and uh, it's our YouTube channel. And we're going to start doing podcasts once a week, conversational based. So we're actually going to take this podcast and throw it up on there as well. So it'll be awesome. Wally, anything you, else you want to share? I'd love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's what an honor and, and privilege yeah. it is just to sit here in this glory filled room <laughs> you guys don't understand this room is full of glory yeah he walked in and he was like man i feel it here I yeah said, well yeah we 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 spend time with god here <laughs> <laughs> well then we go outside he's like were you being serious or sarcastic i'm like dude i was being serious yeah, i can feel, can feel, it feel in the there. glory yeah you know what's crazy man sometimes um when i'm having a really hard day because we all do mm -hmm. and the enemy is trying to latch its lies on me I can't tell you how many times I'd walk into this room and the spirit would just mm -hmm. remind me of all of the things that he's doing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, God, I'm sorry, forgive me, you know, <laughs> but yeah. So guys, listen, if you want to partner with the ministry of father's glory, um, you can text glory G L O R Y to the number 801 801. It's all on the screen. If you live in the USA and or Canada, or you can visit fathersglory.org forward slash give. Okay. Guys, love you all. Um, we unfortunately we don't have time to do the uh fresh oil after party, after stream party uh for today. Also want to thank you for a shout out to all of the YouTube members uh who uh are who's decided to give on a monthly basis. Thank you so much. YouTube memberships goes directly to uh supporting and financing my family personally so that we can continue to be a blessing to the church and to House of Glory without being a financial burden on uh, on the ministry. So love you guys, and we will see you on Wednesday. In Jesus' name, blessings.